This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Brightdrop, GM's electric commercial van service, delivered the first 150 of its Zevo 600 vehicles to FedEx. Brightdrop will supply FedEx with 2,500 vans over the next couple of years. Those vans are designed for last mile delivery and have an estimated range of 250 miles. By 2040, FedEx plans to convert its entire fleet to electric and to help support all of those EVs, it started to build a charging network at its facilities across the country. And speaking of electric commercial vehicles, Daimler Truck will soon unveil the long haul version of its electric Actros truck. It features an LFP or lithium iron phosphate battery pack that's estimated to return 500 kilometers or 310 miles of range. LFP batteries tend to have a longer life, and Daimler claims the E-Actros long haul will be able to charge from 20 to 80 percent in, quote, well under 30 minutes. Customer trials start next year. Honda is greatly expanding its EV production capacity in China. It broke ground on a new EV production plant with joint venture partner GAC. That plant will make its EN series of vehicles, like the SUV that we showed off to you yesterday. It's expected to be online by 2024, which is the same time another plant will open with its other JV partner, Dong Feng. Those two plants will have a combined annual production capacity of 240,000 electric vehicles. More renewable energy, like wind and solar, can help offset the demand the growing number of electric vehicles will put on the grid. But in Germany, around 6,200 gigawatt hours of green electricity had to be switched off in 2020 due to the limited capacity of its power system. That would be enough energy to drive around 2.6 million EVs for a whole year. So VW wants to tap into that. It's now testing a pilot program in Germany with about 20 ID owners that will plug into an app when they plan to charge their vehicle next. And based on that info, a charging plan will be determined so the most amount of renewable energy is used. This helps ensure it doesn't go to waste and more green electricity is used. VW says there will also be financial incentives like free public charging. We want to know what drives your testing. OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. We've got a few updates on the start of production for a couple of upcoming electric vehicles. According to Auto Forecast Solutions, Production of the Genesis GV70 kicks off in the U.S. in December at Hyundai's plant in Montgomery, Alabama. Production of the next-gen GV70 starts in January of 2028 at Hyundai's new $5.5 billion EV plant in Georgia that it announced last month. And production of the Ram 1500 BEV begins at its Warren Truck plant in Michigan in November of 2024. And assembly plants are complicated, and changing one over for a new vehicle can seem like a Herculean task. That's why BMW is taking 3D scans of all of its production sites. By moving the layout of its plants into the virtual world, it will more easily be able to plan and make changes for future vehicle programs. It will also greatly cut down on the time needed to do that. By early 2023, BMW says it will have all of its plants digitally scanned. In an effort to broaden its talent pool of potential hires, General Motors is dropping its four-year college degree requirement for salaried workers. Instead, the automaker will focus on real-world experience for certain roles and has started a new approach for hiring. It includes a focus on diversity, inclusion, and equity as well as on workplace innovation. The effort is part of GM CEO Mary Barra's goal of becoming the most inclusive company in the world. 
nearly half of the 500 new employees it has hired recently, came from, quote, underrepresented categories in the auto industry. China has big import tariffs on American-made vehicles, and that's reflected in the price of the new Ford F-150 Raptor. The performance truck just went on sale in China with a starting price of just over $102,500. For comparison, the Raptor sells for just shy of 70 grand in the U.S. But even at that price, we bet Chinese consumers will be happy to snap them up. And this will also be the first time Ford tests out a direct-to-customer sales model. So, no need to go through a dealer. At Schaeffler, we pioneer motion. Electrifying mobility. Manufacturing smarter. Reducing CO2 emissions. Making energy production clean. Scheffler pioneers motion to advance how the world moves. The future of Michigan is extraordinarily bright. Um, we have such incredible assets, and I think more and more we're realizing how to put those together in a way that's going to help this state really help lead the nation uh, as we go forward. Longtime Autoline viewers may remember a company we talked to a few years back called Transient Plasma Systems. It's developed a plasma ignition system to replace spark plugs, which use fast pulses of plasma and electrically charged gas at a low temperature to ignite the fuel. It improves thermal efficiency, and the whole process requires less energy and provides better emissions. And now the company is sharing validation results conducted by the FEV Group. It tested the plasma ignition system in a Toyota 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine with direct and port injection, which is commonly used in Camrys, and compared that to the stock ignition system. The results show a brake-specific fuel consumption improvement of 6% with the plasma system. That's the rate of fuel consumption divided by the power produced. And there was no degradation of combustion with the increased exhaust gas recirculation, and the plasma ignition showed an improved tolerance to lean burn than the stock one. The system could improve fuel economy by as much as 20%. And a sad note here, Marianne Keller, one of the best known analysts on Wall Street, died last week. Marianne made her name in the auto industry as a Wall Street analyst at Kidder Peabody when in 1979 she predicted that Chrysler was going to go bankrupt. No one believed her and she was roundly ridiculed until Chrysler CEO Lee Iacocca finally admitted that the company was out of cash and needed a bailout from the government. She was the first woman to win the title of Institutional Investors Top Analyst Award and went on to win it for 12 years straight. She wrote several books and her first, called Rude Awakening, The Rise, Fall, and Struggle to Recover at General Motors, won the prestigious Eccles Prize from Columbia University. She was also a guest a number of times on Autoline. Marianne Keller probably had more influence on the auto industry than any other Wall Street analyst, and the industry owes her a debt of gratitude. Do car designers really need to use clay models to design a new car? Or can they do it all digitally? Well, that's the topic on AutoLine After Hours this Thursday. Designer John Manugian will be joining us, and so will Doug Grieg, the CEO of a company called Taurus, which makes clay milling machines. So join John and Gary as they dive into one of the most controversial topics in today's automotive design. But that wraps up today's show. Thank you for watching. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over the air engineering, boost your game. Scheffler, we pioneer motion. And by the Michigan Economic Development Corporation.